Welcome to the Wellcast. The world has a lot to say. We're bringing a biblical perspective to those conversations. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Wellcast. I am Melissa Denisi, co-host, and our other co-host, Jordan Hogue, is out on sabbatical for a couple of months. So I have invited two wonderful guests to be here with me today, Megan Bianchi. Hello. And Trevor Sapon. How's it going, everybody? Yes, and we get to talk to you today about the foundational practice of intentionally pursuing community. And so we've been talking about that as a church. Uh, maybe we did a couple weeks ago, but I would love, um, before we get started into that, if each of you would just kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, all that kind of stuff. So I'll let, yeah, I'll let Megan go first. Sweet. Hi, I'm Megan Bianchi. I am a life group leader for young adults here at The Well. Um, I am a mom of two boys and I'm pregnant with a girl. So Yay. that's I exciting. No Surprise. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, so that's really fun. We're due on Christmas, so that'll be cool. Um, and then I also work at Cup of Joy. Yeah. Sweet. Well, my name is Trevor Sapon. I am the PM Life Group Coordinator here at The Well. So shout out to the 6 p.m. on Sundays. Woo-hoo. Uh, I am married to my beautiful and wonderful wife, Maddie, um, and we just got a dog, which is great, and I love playing music and sports, and I love just connecting with people, so I'm excited. Yeah, and what kind of dog is it? Because it is a mini golden doodle. Yes, so, so are you sleeping much right now? He's fully crate trained, so we sleep perfectly throughout the night. Oh, perfect. What mm-hmm. a perfect little dog you got. Quite literally. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah, quite literally, huh? He's got his things. And Megan has her own little life group in her family now a couple boys a girl mm-hmm. everything look yeah, at that we're excited. look at that okay mm-hmm. um so let's talk about community i think before we dive into this topic that is kind of a churchy word probably that we use community so um maybe trevor how about how would you define community when we say that what does that mean to you yeah i think community gets tossed around a lot um as a place to where you can like have friends or do some fun things, but I would challenge people to think of it more deeply in a sense of it is a place in which you can gather with others to be fully known and to know other people. Oh, that's good. To bring about the deepest parts of yourself and still understand that these people are with you mm-hmm. and that you guys can do life together and that there's trust. And so that when you do bring up these things, whether it's sin, heartache, um, hardship, mm-hmm. uh, these people are there for you. Yeah. Um, and they're all representing the love of Christ uh, in this, in that setting. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think when I think of community too, I think of, yes, those people you can be honest with and uh, the hard parts of your life, but even the parts you can celebrate and Mm -hmm. enjoy and even just have fun A Sunday afternoon barbecue, those people that um, in all, all seasons of your life, all circumstances really are there for you. So, so how about this? What does community look like after you guys share, you know, your full time in ministry and your, your full time working and full time mom. So what does community look like for you guys these days? I think it's perfect. (laughs) (laughs) I think I have perfect community. Um, no, it's, it's really hard. Um, I think like, in when I found Christ, I had awesome community. That's kind of like how I met the Lord was like through the community I had. Um, and I worked at a summer camp for a couple years. And when you're working on staff with other Christians um, for 24 hours a day, you, you're known. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this season, I'm working full time. I have two toddlers. I'm pregnant. Um, I don't have time for me and the Lord, let alone um, community. And so it's, it's there, but it just looks different. And I've had to kind of learn like, oh, it's not going to be super fun all the time where I'm not going to get to just drop everything and go to dinner all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have people who are close to me, um, who know me. And so it's cool because it's a lot smaller than it was. Um, but it's, it's a lot more intentional and sweet, which is nice. What did that community look like when you shared that's kind of how you came mm-hmm. to Christ? What was that like? So that must have been a season in college. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. So okay. I was 18 um, and I was kind of like figuring out the Lord on my own. And um, a couple co-workers at the time, um, I was working at Starbucks before <laughs> Kappa. Mm-hmm. And a couple co-workers at the time were like, hey, like we read our Bibles at Kappa Joy um, if you ever want to join us. And it was just like getting to read my Bible with people. 
um, and ask questions and feel safe being able to say, hey, I don't understand this or mm-hmm. like what is going on in Second Chronicles? Like, I don't I don't want to read this book. It's scary. <laughs> That's what you were reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of told God, like, OK, I'm just going to start at the beginning and go. And it was really hard. Um, but it was cool to see um, or just have those people come alongside me and be with me in that. And then through reading my Bible at Cup of Joy, you know, I make friends with the people there or mm. I see people I know from church or now I feel connected when I go to the, it was a seven at the time, but when oh, I went yeah. to the seven, it's like, oh, I saw you at Cup of Joy. We read our Bibles together. I'm going to sit with you. And so that community built kind of around Christ. And it was cool because I feel like that community um, knew the Megan that like God was calling me to be and was able to spur oh, wow. me on to be that. Mm. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Trevor? What does community look like for you these days? So similar to Megan in my college days when I first moved to Fresno, actually, um, I was I was also out a lot and dropping whatever and going out and it was great and it was totally fun and it was really forming uh, in the sense that I that it was possible to have a group of, of believers to actually do life with, yeah. right? Uh, that has changed a lot mm-hmm. since then, but I think it's uh, sweet in its own way. Um, currently right now, there's multiple pockets, uh, but I do have like this circle, I guess is what you would call it, like yeah. the inner circle. I hate mm-hmm. to say it that mm-hmm. way, but that's mm-hmm. kind of what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, of, of men um, that I can just talk to all the time. Uh and being vulnerable is actually a hard thing for me. I know I mentioned that it's a place to do that, but mm-hmm. truthfully, it's a hard mm-hmm. thing for me to do. And it takes a lot of trust for me, for someone else, uh, in someone else to actually be able to do that. And so it's a smaller group. And I actually love that I don't have to try to be that for a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, so God's really blessed me in that way. But at the same time, I do have a lot of people in which I can do other things into and speak into and yeah. just kind of be with in life for other situations but also learning how to do that and let other people do it for myself Mm -hmm. as well. So it's been a real sweet season. So we were kind of joking before we started this about being introvert or extrovert. (laughs) And I think a lot of people think, oh, people who have community or these deep friendships, they must be extroverts. Mm -hmm. And I know you've shared there were, there was a season where you felt like I really don't need community. (laughs) Right. Uh, Can you share a little bit about that kind of how your journey from that place to now you're a, life group coordinator which is your (laughs) job is literally to help people find community so what was that journey like for you man so that was right after i started meeting that great group of people in college so i moved to fresno uh didn't really have community at the time Uh, and so all i did was go to school and uh, go to work and come back and then i'd isolate in my room and just play video games with friends that are out of town that was that was pretty much my life yeah for I don't know how long, maybe two years. It was not great, not healthy. But I kind of got stuck in that and thinking, you know what, this is just kind of what it is. This is what God has me, and I and I don't really have that kind of iron sharpens iron community, mm-hmm. and I was just kind of okay with it. So I kind of said, forget it. Um, mm-hmm. Then I went to, I got called by my friend, shout out to David Saley up in Seattle. <laughs> he uh, He's like, hey, you should come to camp again. It's been a few years since we've seen you. You should come as a counselor this time, though, instead of a, a, a camper. And I was like, I don't know, man. I'm not in the best place right now. I'm not really, like, I'm trying to walk with the Lord, but I don't really know what that looks like right mm-hmm. now. And he's like, you should pray about it. And sure enough, I ended up going. Mm-hmm. And through that whole progress of just being there, him and some of my other friends that I've met throughout the years are just like, hey, man, how are you doing? Like, honestly, like, are you mm-hmm. actually okay? And I finally was able to open up and say, oh, wow. I'm not. Mm-hmm. And I man, I missed this, like, with you guys. Like, I miss seeing you guys a lot. And uh, they're like, hey, I know it's hard, but you really should give it another shot mm-hmm. in Fresno. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just really like kind of like the knife in the heart kind of mm-hmm. thing, but in the best way. Yeah. And so sure enough, I was like, Lord, hey, I don't really want to. I've, I've, I feel like I failed here already. But my friends and you, I feel like you guys are calling me to pursue life here in Fresno and to trust you with that not just get done with my degree and go back home. Yeah. And so when I did, literally the first day of going back to campus, I'm walking around looking for my class. I look up, and sure enough, one of my now pretty good friends, she, she's like staring me in the face, and I'm staring her in the face after I look up, and I was like, hi, I'm Trevor, nice to meet you. <laughs> and sure enough, she was part of uh, Fresno Crew, 
So uh, Campus yeah. Crusade for Christ. Yep. And that's how I ended up meeting so many people from the well and yeah. just great uh, becoming friends with them and eventually started to come here yeah. back in 2018. So it's been yeah. five-ish years. Yeah. yeah, I heard you say something in there where, um, and without using the word community, but you had those people in your life who you knew when they asked, how are you doing really? Mm-hmm. They really meant it. Yeah. And so to me, that's where community and it can happen in a lot of different ways. Obviously, we're both on the life group team. So we're mm-hmm. going to give a huge shout out to life groups being a place boom, to help boom, build community. Boom. But it's finding those people in your life who can ask that question and they really want to know and you're safe with whatever answer mm-hmm. you can give them. So, yeah. yeah. OK, so speaking of life groups. Um, Megan, yeah. you're involved in, in, in a couple of life groups, actually. <laughs> in a couple of life groups, uh, yeah. So maybe share, we use that word here at the Well Life Groups. That's, that's the place where we would uh, pl- plug people into small groups where you're either going through foundations, our foundational practices curriculum, or you're going through the life group guide. But um, for those who aren't a part of a life group, it's usually a small group of people, eight to 16, although you'll hear from Megan, there's more than that in her group, but <laughs> sometimes she'll explain the heart behind that. Um, but where you're meeting weekly or maybe every other week, and that's the intent, right? You're really getting on a life on life level with people where you're finding out not just what they thought about question number two in the homework, but how's marriage? How's parenting? Mm-hmm. How's work? How's lack of work? How's time with the Lord? Mm. So, sorry, that was a roundabout way to say, tell me about your life group. (laughs) So, um, my life group is probably one of my favorite things happening just in my life in general right now. Um, I lead, um, like I said earlier, a college-age girls' life group on Wednesday nights, but I actually, my husband also leads a college-age guys' life group at the same time. So, um, we're very intentional about we meet together but separately. So, we do dinner, and then we kind of split up. We make the boys go sit outside in the really hot summer or the Mm -hmm. really cold winter, Mm -hmm. and we get the cozy living room um, Mm -hmm. that has coffee and snacks. And um, we started last year, and we went through um, foundations last year, and it was just so cool to kind of have an open hand and see, like, God, what do you want to do with this life group? Because I don't know. I'm not... I'm nothing but just someone who felt like God wanted me to do this, and so Mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. Um, And last year was awesome. We had... uh, like 20 girls weekly showing up. And it was really scary because in my head, I've always done really small, small groups. So I did um, high school ministry with the well for a few years and I had five to six girls in my group for the whole time I did it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I loved that because I feel like you really get to know your, your, your people. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I started serving, I kind of found that there was this big need for, there wasn't someone like me leading a life group like this. And so it filled really fast because there, there were so many girls who wanted a life group that they didn't have to coordinate, that they didn't have to plan, that they didn't have to do anything for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we hit 20 really fast. Mm -hmm. And then the, with college, you have a high turnover because people are here for a semester and then they move or they ended up not liking Fresno state or whatever. Um, and so in the spring we had, 20 still, but it was kind of a different, Mm -hmm. different 20. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just big, but really cool to just have people come and be like, I've never been to church before, but I'm here. I, I, I've given out so many Bibles just with girls showing up because they don't, they don't have one and then they don't know how to read it. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to my girls. I love you. (laughs) Um, but they, uh, it's been cool to see. So that was a year ago and it's cool to see now those girls, um, we shared our stories a few weeks ago, and those girls, their testimonies this year f- had like resolution to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When they shared them the first time, it was, this is all the bad that's happened to me, and now I'm here, mm-hmm. and I don't really know. Mm-hmm. And so it was cool this year to be like, but now, but now look at what God has done through this community, not through me, not through her, not through her, but through just you being mm-hmm. faithful. Wow. So that's super cool. But that's what we do. Um. And then this year it's been cool because we have new girls and new faces. And I feel like even our group is in a different season of life than we were last year. Last year, everybody was either 25 or 18 and kind of in this, I don't know where I'm going. And this Mm -hmm. year it's cool to see. um, I feel like all of my girls are in the same space of 
I want to take my faith seriously and I'm, I'm ready to take the hard steps necessary to do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you said something, uh, there weren't a lot of people like me mm-hmm. creating a space for people like them. Mm-hmm. And I think what the reason I asked you on this yeah. podcast and what I love about your heart in your life group is you are saying there are you're a season ahead of these mm-hmm. women, maybe two seasons ahead of, I don't know, some of them, but a season ahead, mm-hmm. you said yes to opening your home to disciple the generation behind you. So you didn't say yes because um, you had all kinds of time no, and you live in a mansion and mm-hmm. you were bored, right? <laughs> no, you just said yes to this is the call in our life. We don't know what this will look like, but I'm going to show up every week for these girls and 20 women come and get Bibles and community yeah. and hear the gospel. So I love the um, beauty of the obedience there to just say, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to hold it open handed and here we go. So, well, and yeah. it's easy to not feel the pressure of like, oh, I have, like, I have to do this awesome when it's like, God, you put, you put me here. You asked me to do this, Lord. I'm, I'm making spaghetti and meatballs for the 52nd mm-hmm. time this <laughs> year. And we're here and you're working. And that's been the, the most life giving part um, as a life group leader is to just listen to what God is doing in the lives of my girls and be like, oh, that's there's no way that's me. There's yeah. no way I could have done that. Um, and how cool that I get a front row seat to like life change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yes. I love that. Um, yeah. So, t- what are some of the hardships you think? For us, when it comes to pursue intentionally pursuing community, what what keeps us back from doing that? What's hard? What do you guys think? I think, <clears throat> sorry, I think one of the things actually is the tension between wanting to be a part of something, but also one hundred percent fully afraid that I won't be accepted. Mm-hmm. You know, or my stuff is too much. Yeah, mm. and I think that carries a lot of baggage going into that um i would think even for the the demographic at least that i see more often is like kind of like that college age to like upper 20s mm-hmm. um a lot of them think they need to be a certain way or come off a certain way to be part of this like they reach a, a different right. echelon of, of being a christian oh yeah um and i think they also fear what the reaction could be to who they are and, and some of the deepest brokenness of, of who they are. Yeah. Um, you can, it's easy to celebrate. Yeah. You know, the, the fun things. Uh-huh. But it's really hard to enter in, especially if it's like new people. Yeah. Like, can I trust these people? Oh, yeah. Do I even trust God with this? Right. I don't even know. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest things, especially in a world today uh, where society pretty much tells you like, hey, you need, you should be self-sufficient. You should be um, a go-getter, like right. you're an all-star, like mm-hmm. have full confidence in yourself, be successful, mm-hmm. whatever that looks like, you whatever that enough. even means. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things. How have you, or how would you say to someone, how do you overcome that? Because at some point we just have to face that mm-hmm. and enter in, but what, maybe what's helped you or what, how have you helped others overcome that? Yeah. So speaking from like a personal place, I also have struggled with that, like I mm-hmm. mentioned before. But I think that if we look back at just who Christ was and you look back at just um, the stories of, of how he met people where they were at, I think of just the woman at the well, mm-hmm. you know, and our church is named based off of that. He called her out in all of those things, but not once did he ever really like punish her mm-hmm. or condemn her, but really invited her in to say, yeah, I have something better for you. Right. You know, it, I, I am living water. Yeah. And then to go out and say, like, I see you, I know you, and I still love you, mm-hmm. and I want you. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know what that means for you out there. Mm-hmm. If you're struggling with that, I would re- highly encourage you to bring that before the Lord and ask, Lord, do I truly believe that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I even want to believe that? Right. And I think that's a good place to start because when you can really embrace what it means to be loved, by Christ and enter into relationship as he loves you and as his father loves the son and you become adopted as a son and daughter into his kingdom, you get to share in that relationship with the father because of Christ. Yeah. 
That is so beautiful. Yeah. And the best part is you have nothing to uphold on your own because he gives you the spirit to help you do that anyways. Yeah. And so really you get to be a participant and just a person on the ride and watch what he does. Our goal is to abide, mm-hmm. right? And for those out there, sometimes people think abide means obedience. In some ways it does. But abide also means just to be with. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I think we should start yeah. there. Yeah, so starting with bringing it before the Lord. Mm-hmm. That, hey, I'm nervous about this or fearful or mm-hmm. or I've been hurt before yeah. by community and you're asking me to do it again. Yeah. So what about you, Megan? What would you say some of the hardships are? I think for me, like when I just think about what what is hardest for me, it's asking for help. Um, Uh, Like I have community, but it's really difficult for me, especially when I feel like sometimes I'm just trying to like do it all myself and just muscle through like all the things that are going on. Um, Being able to stop and go, oh, like I have a community that wants to do this for me or it would it would bless me if a friend was like, hey, um, my nursery needs to be painted. Like, do you want to come help me? It's like, oh my gosh, I would love nothing more. Like Mm -hmm. that like makes my world go round. Yeah. Um, But the idea of, hey, can you come help me with this practical thing? Feels like I'm such a burden. No one would Mm. ever want to do that. And so just battling, like not even battling, but just like remembering um, community is, is, it's okay to help. And like, I am fueled by helping others and serving others and Mm. I am not a burden. And the reason we are in community together is so we can share those burdens with each other. Yeah, Yeah. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's that needy and needed thing, right? Yeah. We're okay with being needed, but when Mm -hmm. we have Have to be be the needy needy one, Mm -hmm. it feels like, no, I should be able to handle this issue Mm -hmm. or practical need on my own. And the Lord's saying back to your adoption, point, I've given you a new family to help Mm -hmm. you with this. Go ahead, call them up, see what (laughs) they need. Um, I think a few weeks ago when we were just kind of introducing this series, I had talked about one of the hardships to community. um, And I think there's something underneath it, but Mm -hmm. is busyness. I think Mm -hmm. our, our plates are full, our calendars are full. And they're not necessarily full with the things that they should be full with, right? So the first thing that comes up for anyone, and especially my season of young kids working, husband has a stressful job, we have soccer now, we have this, you know, all the things that are great, wonderful gifts, but it makes it hard because Mm -hmm. you're busy and you're tired. Even if you have the time, do I have the emotional energy for someone else? So I think that on the surface, that's what we get a lot, right, is Mm -hmm. I'm too busy or I don't have time for that. But underneath that is I'm not making time for that. My or I do prefer to isolate. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what my flesh wants is just leave me alone and let me be alone and I'll figure it out. When the Lord, you said this too, he's inviting us into something more. And so if we can get underneath that, there's a reality of we work and, you know, we have things going on in our life. It's full but God wired his mm-hmm. people yeah. for community. And yeah. so we're, he would he can make the space if yeah. we offer him up our day, our yeah. week, our month. Then and then there's beauty on the other side of that too. So I think um, I think that's something that's hard, but I think it's something as a church body that we can fight against mm-hmm. and then kind of model. As you were talking too, I was thinking about you know, a mentor of mine shared with me that in the Great Commission, it's go, therefore, and make disciples. But that mm. verb actually means as you are going. Mm. So mm-hmm. kind of like whatever you're already doing, yeah. who are you bringing along? Yeah. And that changed my view of community, of discipleship, because it was like, well, I'm going to Target. Who wants to come with yeah, me to Target? So good. Or yeah. I'm going to go pick up the kids from school. I don't have two hours to sit with you at coffee, but want to sit in the pickup line with me and we mm-hmm. can talk about... Literally, yeah. that's how yeah. discipleship yeah. was going in my life because it was, what am I already doing? Or with the kids, right? Hey, guys, I'm going to go lead a training for life group leaders. Want to come with me? They sat there and went, they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but it was like, as I'm going, we're doing this all together. So community yeah. doesn't have to... It can be in what you're already doing, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the, the kids at the whose parents are on their soccer field sidelines, you know, mm-hmm. you're starting to get to know each other in a deeper way. So even looking for ways to build community without it having to be mm-hmm. this hard, stressful thing. Yeah, I would I would like I love what you said there, like just doing like inviting them into like mm-hmm. your daily rhythm, because mm-hmm. I think people think it has to be a separated, isolated time. Yeah, it doesn't have to be right. Mm-hmm. And then I think if you look back at Jesus and his followers, they were literally, as they were going, just 
yeah doing doing yeah. it and, and so that's a good reminder so yeah. thank you for that yeah um okay so you guys kind of shared what you're how you're pouring into or what you're seeing with the next generation but maybe give a little bit more um what since your your life group is primarily probably like 18 to 25 you yeah. would say and Trevor, you serve at the 6 p.m. gathering, which is a lot of young adults. Mm-hmm. What do you see in the next generation as far as community? What are they desiring? What are they kind of like, if that's it, I don't want it kind of thing? I think, um, so I just asked my girls. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, okay, I did. this is good. I was like, I need your help. Um, but it brought up like a really cool conversation of, I think the two main things that my my girls specifically are desiring Um, And even what I desire is one, a safe space, like Mm -hmm. a space where I can come just as myself, kind of in that as I am going, if that is in sweatpants and a messy bun and a bad attitude, I'm here Mm -hmm. and I feel safe to be here. Um, Or even as I shared earlier, how I have a lot of girls who are just beginning their relationships with the Lord, a safe place to ask questions. Um, Yeah. There's a lot of times where it's like, hey, I don't like, I don't even know if a Christian can ask this question because I became a Christian yesterday. Like, Mm -hmm. what are, like, how do we feel about Halloween? Like, just stuff like that, where it's Mm. like a a place where they can freely ask without fear of judgment, which I think is huge. And then the second thing that came up was um, like intentional moments outside of forced conversation. Mm -hmm. So, Instead of, okay, we're all going to share this thing, boom, boom, boom. Okay, I have to share um, allowing space instead and protecting this space instead for letting the conversation be real and mm. authentic. Mm-hmm. And I think like in in this world where it's TikTok all day long mm. or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, where everything is so inauthentic mm. um, and nothing is really human anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I would argue that like, their perspective of of Christ has lost its humanity a little bit mm. because we see we see perfection everywhere mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so a space that is that is more more intentional with we can stop this at any time because you don't, you're not okay what's going on yeah, yeah. or yeah. um it i it came out a lot when we shared our stories because mm. w- we struggled with the encouragement afterwards of just like Oh yeah. I, if Uh, no one's talking, so I feel like I have to say something and then it's like, okay, but did you even mean that? Or were you just saying that because you felt like you had to say Mm -hmm. something? And Mm -hmm. it was such a good, I thought it was such a good point of like, oh, how often am I just like forcing moments? Yeah. Um, instead of, instead of giving that space for like just free intentional conversation or moments or allowing my girls to have moments of like the Lord meeting them in our group mm-hmm. or in our community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. What are you seeing for the next generation? I think something that I would say probably applies to not just them, but even people in general mm-hmm. is like to know that you're being pursued by others. Mm. Cause I think we go out looking for a group, but if no one's really pursuing us then we don't really feel seen or cared for, mm-hmm. um, and that could be a total turnoff. And so if they get to a church or whatever setting you're in and they're a new person right? and they walk in like, and no one's talking to them, they're going to, they're going to turn off real quick and be like, all right, church is not for me. Mm, wow. You know? Yeah. And therefore it's like, I'm not good enough to be here then I guess. And that could change into their relationship with the Lord too, or like just how they're viewing themselves or, yeah. um, so yeah, I think being pursued is something that we all really desire. Yeah. I think something in both of your stories that you shared along that point is it took somebody, whether it was a group of people Mm -hmm. or that friend who made the call, that our relationship with Christ is personal and it's with other people. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's individual, but it's never alone, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe in these last few minutes, because we've talked about the beauty and the Mm -hmm. good of um, being in a community, but... um, I don't want to sell the picture that you get in a life group and everybody is just (laughs) loves each other Mm -hmm. and they know each other. What do you do when you have people in your life or in your community who are different from you or think differently than you, or they love the Lord and you love the Lord and you guys get on each other's (laughs) nerves? Um, 
how do you live in community with people who maybe, you know, you don't always get along with 100%? What does that look like in your life? I say creatively. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we put, um, we put like these expectations unsaid on ourselves of like, oh, I have to get coffee with this person or, oh, I have to do this, this, and this because that's how I do community with the people like mm. this. Um, and I, I found like, okay, you and I don't necessarily get along or not even get along, but like we just don't click. We don't have a thing that connects mm -hmm. us. But you like puzzles. I like puzzles. Let's do a puzzle together. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, there's this like movie we want to go see. Or, oh, I want to go try this like new ice cream place. Like I've, I've found like finding shoulder to shoulder experiences yeah. makes me one realize, oh, I actually do connect with you um, because I've humanized you a little bit. Yes. Like, oh, we went and did this fun thing that was new for both of us. And I got to kind of experience you outside of just a stuffy mm -hmm. conversation where it's like, I don't want to open up to you and you don't want to open up yeah. to me. Um, and so that's helped a lot is just, um, is just creating spaces that are not just forced conversation. Yeah. And then I, I would also say, um, like guarding my heart against like gossip with even my husband of mm -hmm. like, Oh, this person is hard for me to love. Um, or justifying it by like, Oh no, I'm just talking. Like, I'm just trying to like talk about it. Like, Oh, this is a hard person. Like that can, that can like force me to write people off quickly oh, yeah. because I've just like, Oh, you're hard. I don't need to pour into you. Mm. Um, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I'd rather pour into these easy people. Um, but I think like seeing them as no, but you're in my life and I'm, I'm going to do what I can to know you and love you yeah. um, has gone a lot further. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What about for you, Trevor? Yeah, it's really good. Um, I think some of the bad, like getting into each other's faces and all that other stuff is not easy, uh -huh. but should be embraced. Yeah. Um, and so the first step, if you're really, you know, steamy, <laughs> take a deep breath. Yeah. Differences are okay. Yeah. Um, but in, in, in all seriousness, um, learning to accept those differences actually brings about a beautiful, uh, deeper type of community. Mm -hmm. um, you guys help each other, each other to see different things. Yeah, I agree. Whether in your life or someone else's life. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, don't be afraid of conflict. It's an opportunity to grow and learn about one another. Right. And I think that's where the truest and deepest sense of community is mm -hmm. found. Like we talked about all this trust and all yeah. this other stuff. That happens in the messiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Life is messy. We're not perfect, so we're messy. And we're all broken people trying to be honest before the Lord mm -hmm. and before people. Yeah. So as soon as we can start to embrace that and accept that's just what it is, but then also remember that the Lord calls us to love as he is loved. That's and to good. serve one another in that. Yeah. Then we kind of start to humble ourselves and put the, our, put them before us, um, even when it's really hard. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's going to happen every time. I'm not going to say it's be perfect, but I think if we really try to put that into our hearts as we approach people, it, it it will pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, and I mean, I've had the joy of leading women's Bible study for years now, and we've had groups. We had a group that stuck together, and the age range was 18 to 80. Okay, they were living in very different seasons of life. So they were not connecting because we all were college students and some of us had this class together and we all had Tuesday mm -hmm. night free. They were connecting because they were all pursuing Christ. And I think that's that's awesome. That's where the gold is in mm -hmm. community is we think it's got to be same, same, same all mm -hmm. the time. But really, it's what's unifying us here and what are we pursuing together. Mm -hmm. And then that 80 year old was spurred on by the 18 year old's mm -hmm faith and zeal because she's new to Christ mm -hmm. and the 18 year old is learning from someone who's walked with the Lord for decades and you're saying yep they're different they probably voted differently yeah. or they you know they're <laughs> studying different things or whatever but um, it was a it's just a beautiful picture of community so with that um, thanks you guys for being on and talking yeah. about community and getting vulnerable too so um, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have you back again sometime yay thanks. thank you yeah. thank you thank you Thank you for listening to this episode of The Wellcast. As always, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. For more information about The Well Community Church, visit thewellcommunity.org.